Breaking down all 34 things you missed from the Survivor Season 44 finale. We're talking all things Carson being a puzzle master, the downfall of the Tika 3, the infamous Final Four challenge, Heidi breaking the fire making challenge record, Carolyn coming full circle, and much, much more. And before we get into it, we're giving away another Survivor puzzle. If you want to enter the giveaway, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment down below your thoughts on Jam Jam winning Survivor 44. Let's get right into the breakdown. And with number 34, Jeff introduces the finale. It's actually crazy how far we've come in the new era of Survivor. With constant fourth wall breaking action to start the new era of Survivor, and now in season 44, it's barely there at all. I think it's kind of funny Jeff was hyping up the three medical visits we saw so long ago during episode one. We'll get into it throughout the recap and throughout the video, but I think this season's gonna be remembered by top tier characters with average moments taking place. Number 33, New Beach. I'm hoping going into next season with Survivor Season 45, which by the way, I'm already super pumped up and excited for the next season of Survivor, but I'm really hoping we mix up this new era format. As you remember last Tribal Council, all the players brought the gear with them to Tribal Council because they knew they were going to a new beach already. Everyone was shook that Heidi had a hidden immunity idol and she played it at the last Tribal Council. Although it was fully a waste for Heidi to play her idol there, it means 100% a new idol has been hidden they just don't know that yet. Number 32, Idol Hunt at Night. It's kind of funny the comparison. We have some players like Carson who just want to go to bed and then other players like Carolyn who want to idol hunt right now. It's really tough how I feel about all the idol hunting moments in the finale because it leads to a lot of fun moments, but also it ends up being a complete waste as no one's going to find the hidden immunity idol. Obviously, we got to talk about those fun moments of Carolyn so confident that she will find the idol and Jam Jam pretending he already found it, which come on. That was a great callback to Eliza's stick idol way long ago. Number 31, day 24. Honestly, we need to give the Survivor producers a round of applause for changing up the format slightly for the finale this episode. As we don't get any word scramble advantages like we've seen for Survivor 41, Survivor 42, and Survivor 43. But it will get replaced by something else leading into number 30, idol hunt. Don't get me wrong, this idol hunt makes perfect sense, especially at the final five it's the last time you can play an idol. We even get scenes of the Survivor producers making fun of the players, highlighting exactly where the hidden immunity idol is. However, the problem is this kind of editing only works if there is a payoff afterwards of someone finding the idol. That doesn't happen here at all. No one ends up finding the idol. For a second, I thought they were double tricking us and Lauren was going to find the idol, just like Amanda from Survivor Fans vs. Favorites. Obviously, that doesn't end up happening and we have an awkward moment at Tribal Council I'm pumped to talk about. Number 29, Players' Perspectives. Nothing specific to talk about, just while the idol hunt was going on, we had everyone's perspective on how they're gonna win Survivor and their road to get to that victory. Ultimately, at this point in the episode, I was still on the Carolyn bandwagon that Carolyn was gonna win the season, and ultimately, I get a little heartbroken for what we're gonna be talking about at the very end of the video. Number 28, Carson is a threat. This plan to vote Carson out is the first of many decoy plans that's gonna be happening, as obviously, Lauren's gonna be the one going home. I think what ends up happening is Lauren was just such an obvious vote the producers did everything they can to try and make it seem like it wasn't so obvious. We see Lauren, Heidi, and Jam Jam come together with the thought of voting Carson out and they even bring Carolyn in on the plan. I don't know how legitimate this plan was but because how Survivor works this was taking place before the challenge. Obviously Carson was gonna end up winning immunity. Number 27, Carson knows he's a threat. It's kind of crazy how all season long all these players were so self-aware on how they were coming across. As I don't know if it was overconfidence, but Carson was fully aware that he was the biggest threat to win the game at this point. Number 26, challenge time. You always gotta love the final five challenge of Survivor, as the players race through a three level obstacle to collect some keys and use the keys to open a chest, where they'll find a rope to grab a ladder and on the other side is a classic puzzle. And it's also gonna be for reward, where the players are gonna go to the Survivor Sanctuary with some spaghetti, chocolate, cake and carrot cake. I'm just picking up on this now. Whenever Jeff Probst talks about the Survivor Sanctuary, he's trying to force a new catchphrase onto us. As Jeff Probst is gonna say, the Survivor Sanctuary is a spot where good things happen. Number 25, Jeff Probst says thank you. Just like how Jeff Probst always tells the players thank you for an awesome season of Survivor and always tells the fans to apply for Survivor, I really need to say thank you and I really mean that. You watching this video right now, thank you for watching and supporting me in the channel. If you aren't 
subscribed to the channel yet, please do that now and help me pass Russell Hance on YouTube. It was so cool to see Carolyn shout us out earlier in the season with a battle with Russell Hance. And as a bonus, when we hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to be making a dedicated video interviewing Russell Hance. Number 24, Final 5 Challenge. With there being a puzzle at the end of the challenge and Carson's storyline all season crushing the puzzles with his 3D printing skills, we knew what was going to happen. But it was so cool to see Heidi hustle through the early stages of the challenge, Carolyn just being pumped to make it to the puzzles, and it was super interesting to see Carson build the border of the puzzle before doing the middle. However, it doesn't matter, Carson ends up winning the challenge leading into number 23, Carson's decision. It's crazy how much Carson's 3D printing puzzle preparation has helped him in these challenges early on in the game, at the merge, and for multiple individual challenges later on. Not gonna lie, I was kinda shook Carson picked Jam Jam to go on reward with him to the Survivor Sanctuary over Carolyn, and I'm about to explain why. Number 22, Survivor Sanctuary. Whenever you make it to the late game in Survivor, it's always so clutch to win that final five reward as you're running on fumes at this point in the game. I really think Carson made the wrong decision here, taking Jam Jam over Carolyn on reward, as Carson's plan was to vote out Lauren anyway, so it didn't matter who he picked. Carolyn has proven all season to be an emotional type of Survivor player, and leaving the three girls together has the possibility of them forming an all-girls alliance. Number 21, Sanctuary Strategy. Ultimately, Jam Jam's not going to be getting his way as he wants to vote Carolyn out, but Carson wants to vote Lauren out of the game. We do need to give the editor some respect this season for giving us a dominating Survivor winner. We'll be talking about it throughout the video, but although it came across as an obvious winner, it was nice to see a dominating winner this season. It was a nice change to see a winner that was at the forefront of the entire edit the whole season instead of in the sidelines. Think about it, in the new era of Survivor, we had Erica in 41, Marianne in 42, and Gabler in 43, all hiding in plain sight. Anyways, we see Carson say the only way Lauren survives Tribal Council is if she finds a hidden immunity idol, so I thought that was a little bit of foreshadowing. Number 20, The Losers. At the final five, Carson can't be voted out, so it makes perfect sense for the girls to want to vote out Jam Jam. Major props for Lauren and Heidi with their reasoning behind voting for Jam Jam with Carolyn. As they remind Carolyn that it was Carson that took Jam Jam on reward instead of her, and they tell Carolyn that Jam Jam told them to vote for Carolyn at the last tribal council. I saw major flashbacks to Debbie from Survivor Game Changers when Carolyn was yelling in confessionals. Number 19, players come together. If you were grossed out by it last week, good news for you, there's no burping in Carolyn's mouth from Jam Jam this week. Hear me out for a second, it makes for a great final episode seeing this battle, this drama between the Tika 3, especially between Carolyn and Jam Jam. I just wish we got more of it throughout the season and the Tika 3 falling apart earlier in the season. Really, it's my only complaint of the new era of Survivor and the casting process involved that everyone's just a little bit too nice with each other. Just like how the jury talks to the final three later in the episode, we'll get to there, but everyone's just way too nice all the time. Number 18, Downfall of Tika. Obviously, we know it's a fake out and there's not going to be a downfall of Tika here, but I'm so surprised the Tika 3 alliance made it throughout the entire game. Although they're an all-time favorite alliance and I'm happy they made it this far in the game, I think it would have been smarter if they turned on each other earlier. Before you start yelling at me in the comments, obviously it worked out for Jam Jam, he wins the season. But I'm talking about Carolyn and Carson, I think it would have been smarter for them to turn on Jam Jam a few episodes ago. Number 17, The Plans. Like I said a little bit earlier in the video, I think this tribal council was obvious lore was going to be voted out, so the editors do everything they can to not make it so obvious. We have so many different plans taking place as the girls are going to target Jam Jam, Jam Jam's going to target Carolyn, Carson's going to target Lauren, and Carson's going to target Heidi. Number 16, Lauren scrambling. I wouldn't say scrambling, more that she knew she needed to find the idol or she was going home. And before we cut to tribal, I was so convinced Lauren was going to be finding the idol and the audience was going to be getting blindsided. But instead, all the idol stuff seen in the early parts of the finale just feel like a complete waste of time. Number 15, Tribal Council. Going into the final five Tribal Council, I was convinced at this point one of the Tico 3 was gonna win for how much screen time they were all getting. I get the sense that Lauren talked her way into being voted out at Tribal Council. I gotta say though, it was super refreshing not having any advantages or idols at the final five. Number 14, Lauren voted out. I tweeted this out, reminded me of Max from Survivor Worlds Apart with Lauren's double-double fake out of the idol. With the amount of respect the other players showed towards Lauren 
throughout this episode, I wish we saw more of her all season, as Lauren was the final Ratu player voted out of Survivor 44. Number 13, Final Four Challenge. Going into this challenge, I had a smile on my face, as I'm not even joking, I've had dreams about making the Final Four of Survivor, competing in this challenge and winning it, as the players have one hand tied behind their back and dropping balls into a cage that will go back and forth out two different ways, and if a ball drops, you're out. Number 12, The Challenge. The Final Four Challenge itself is awesome, I just hate how useless it feels with the Final Four fire making challenge taking place. I have done my research and the strategy for this challenge is count how many seconds it takes for the ball to go all the way down, and that way you know how to evenly split out the different balls when Jeff tells you to put more in the cage. As Heidi wins her first individual immunity challenge of the season, leading into number 11, Heidi and Jeff. Low key, I thought it was part of the adrenaline of Heidi winning the final immunity challenge, but she tells the Jeff and everyone else there that she's doing fire. More of that there's a possibility that she will be taking herself into fire. But there's a big problem with this. If you announce that you might be going into fire, you kind of have to go in or all the other players will second guess you. Number 10, fire making practice. On Twitter, Marianne wants to know why all these players want to go into the fire making challenge. Call me old fashioned, but I truly hate the final four fire making twist. I understand it's not going anywhere, blah, blah, blah. I just wish it wasn't such a resume building move at the very end of the game. I think this will change for future seasons of Survivor and I'll explain a little bit later when we get to the fire making duel. If we have to rank everyone's fire making skill level, we easily have Heidi, Carolyn, and Jam Jam all tied for first place and then Carson behind all of them leading into number nine, Carson and Jam Jam. I wouldn't say Carson sucks at making fire, it's just all the other players are really, really amazing at it. On a rewatch of the episode this morning, knowing that Jam Jam wins the game, it's really heartfelt and emotional seeing Jam Jam help Carson here. It's good to remember sometimes these are real people building real relationships out there. Number eight, Travel Council. In the game of Survivor that's so intense and grueling, I hate how the fire making duel is such a resume builder. It's tough and a little mean for Heidi, but I'm glad the winner of the fire making challenge didn't win the season. If you've been paying attention all season, the producers have been leaving little Easter eggs and hints that Carson would be in the fire making duel, as he was in so many shots all season, standing close to the fire, leading into number seven, Carson versus Heidi. Yes, that's right, Heidi placed herself into the fire making duel against Carson, as everyone was hoping Carson 3D printed a fire. That also means both Carolyn and Jam Jam have made the final three. And again, I'm sorry Heidi, but I'm glad you don't end up winning the game in the end after placing yourself in fire. Although I first gotta give her some praise for being the fastest fire making champion in Survivor history. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a video this summer of me seeing how fast I can make fire. But I'm pumped, even though she gave up safety to compete in fire, the jury didn't give her the win in the end. Hopefully meaning future players won't put such a high emphasis on the fire making duel. Number 6, Carson voted out. It was so tough to watch a member of the Tika 3 finally voted out, meaning the final 3 of the season is gonna be Heidi, Carolyn, and Jam Jam. Number 5, Final 3 Feast. I really hope you didn't miss this funny confessional as Jam Jam tells us only 3 people end up making the final 3. And for all the complaining in the new era of Survivor with under the radar winners, it was so refreshing to see Jam Jam win the season with 81 confessionals. The only winner with more confessionals in a single season is Hatch, Tony, and Boston Rob, as the players are given their highly deserved final three feasts delivered by both. Number four, the jury speaks. I brought it up last season during my recap, and I'm super happy that this jury speaks segment is a part of the new era of Survivor. As it always felt awkward between the final four and the final three, like let's just get to that final tribal council. I'm also such a sucker for dramatic moments, and the editors do a really good job making this feel dramatic with close-up slow-mo shots. Number three, Carolyn coming full circle. For such an unorthodox way to start a survivor season the way Carolyn did with her first confessional. All right, Carolyn, you ready? So I'm just like talking? Yeah, to me. Just pretend it's just you and I shooting it, the bowl. 
about what I just like, saying who I am. I love how although Carolyn doesn't win the season in the end, she comes full circle with that other confessional. Number two, final travel council. I'm still in complete shock that Carolyn is a zero vote finalist of Survivor. It's something that's not going to change, so I try to not let it bother me, but I really don't like how all the jury just talks together instead of single questions. It causes a group think of all the jury almost thinking the same way, and some players lose the chance to talk at all. Lesson to any future Survivor players, if you ever make the final three, please don't cut off the other players while they're talking, it just looks bad. Anyways, big things I noticed from this final tribal council were, Jam Jam came off amazing how he was talking the whole time. Sadly, I feel like at the same time, Carolyn choked it a little bit. I loved how Carson was coaching Carolyn the entire time. It felt weird Brandon didn't get the chance to speak at all. Leading into number one, Jam Jam wins Survivor. Ultimately, it really hurts me that Carolyn didn't receive any of the votes at the final tribal council. Although it's way too early to say, the season's still way too fresh in my mind, but I think Carolyn's the best zero vote finalist ever. But at the same time, I'm super pumped to see Jam Jam being the winner of the season, so deserved. And it makes perfect sense why Jeff Probst loved the season so much as Jam Jam dominated the edit all season. Anyways, congratulations Brooke, you're this week's puzzle giveaway winner. I'll announce the final puzzle giveaway winner of the season next week during my Survivor Season 44 review and click right here for everything we know so far of Survivor 45.